Hey guys, it's Fee, and I'm here for an update. So, I had an appointment at the doctor's today. Today is Monday, February 23rd. And before I get into that, I'm going to back up a few days and catch you guys up with what's going on with me lately. So, um, TMI warning. This is a pregnancy vlog. You're going to expect that, right? But I'm going to say it anyways. TMI warning. <laughs> um, Midweek. Midweek, I started getting some, I want to call it discolored discharge. It wasn't flat out bleeding or spotting, but there was definitely a discoloration there. You know, maybe your average non-paranoid person wouldn't have noticed it, but because of my history, I can't help but, you know, look every time I go to the bathroom. So there was some discoloration there. It was very, very slight. I just kind of let it go. Um... I didn't really even call them about it because it was so, so minuscule, but it was definitely there, so I was just keeping an eye on it. Well, by Friday, it had, uh, it stopped. I would say by midday Friday, it had stopped. And all this weekend, I didn't see anything. There was nothing the rest of the day Friday. There was nothing Saturday. There was nothing Sunday. I was like, yes, yes. Well, then Sunday night, last night, I started getting spotting. It wasn't like a discolored discharge anymore. This was flat out blood. It was spotting and it was pink. It wasn't really brown. It wasn't really red. I'm going to go with pink. And um, there wasn't like a crazy amount, you know, nothing like the SCH I had in, in June. But um, it was definitely there. It was on the paper. It was on my liner. It was um, a little bit, a little bit in the bowl. Um, but water always makes it look much worse than it really is because it spreads out. So I didn't really think anything of that. But it was definitely there. And because it was last night, uh, you had an appointment today, I didn't even bother to call because there was no way I was going to get there any earlier than the appointment I had today anyways. So I walked in today, um, told them everything that was going on. They could tell that I was just a big anxiety ball. I was a nervous wreck. Um... I kept trying to tell myself that, you know, it's, it, 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 it may be nothing. It could be okay. IVF pregnancies tend to bleed. If it really is twins, twin pregnancies tend to bleed. Uh, I kept trying to tell myself that there was a lot of you who were sending me messages that I did um, share this with that, that were telling me the same thing. It might be nothing. It might be nothing. But, man, that voice in the back of your head, one, once you get that voice... And, and what I'm talking about is if you've ever had a problem, if you've ever had a loss, if you've ever had a miscarriage, if you've ever had anything like that, it, you, you get this voice in the back of your head. <laughs> and it just doesn't shut up. And um, most of the time I, I can muffle it. I can tell it to go away. I can talk my way through it. But that voice was screaming, just screaming. And it was so hard to ignore. Um, it was driving me crazy. It really was. And I think that's only because when I had the SCH that caused the lost heartbeat back in June, this is how it started. It started with this kind of minuscule spotting. So, of course, it's going to freak me out. I'm not going to lie. I, I was terrified. Terrified. But I try to do my best not to let fear control me. But it's not really very realistic to say that we're not fearful. That's very hard not to be fearful through this whole thing. <laughs> so I'm not going to even claim that. But I don't like it when fear controls me and it was starting to control me because the voice was just screaming. <laughs> so, so, got to the appointment, told them everything that was going on. And she goes to do the ultrasound. And, and, we're okay. <laughs> we're okay. However, um, we are fee plus one, not two. There's one. Singles in pregnancy. Um, we did have two, but the second one, um, we don't know if it didn't have growth in the sac at all, if it just didn't take, if it didn't, you know, implant properly. But that sac, the second sac, is collapsing. So that one did not make it. And more than likely, that is what I'm getting the bleeding from. Um, they're telling me that it very well may continue. 
if I if it starts to get worse or heavier, I need to call them. But even if it does, that very well could be from the collap the collapsing sac. We're hoping that some of it will reabsorb and the spotting won't get any worse. And it'll just stop on its own. That, that's what we're hoping for. That's definitely what I'm hoping for because it can stop like driving me crazy. <laughs> I, I, I just, ugh, I, I so didn't want to see blood again. I cannot tell you. I prayed and prayed and prayed for an uneventful pregnancy because I don't know, it, it just, it doesn't seem like I'm asking for, for, you know, mountains to move there. I just wanted an uneventful pregnancy, no blood. I've seen enough blood during pregnancies before, but that's not to be, but that's all right. That's okay. That's okay. Why is it okay? Because the other one is doing great. Um, I am five weeks, six days today, and we have a heartbeat. <laughs> we have a heartbeat already. I was not expecting a heartbeat. I, it seemed kind of early to me. I think I was kind of like right on the borderline of where you may or may not start to see it. Um, so I wasn't expecting a heartbeat at all. I wasn't expecting that until maybe next week. Um, but we have a heartbeat, and it is 110 at five weeks and six days. And I do have a picture. Very small, but you can see a fetal pole in there. We've got growth. And while I did not get to hear the heartbeat, I did see the little flicker on the screen and it was, oh, that's one of the most amazing things to see, guys. Oh. So that's that. That is that. I have another appointment next Monday. Another ultrasound. We'll see how it's going. Uh, they were supposed to draw my blood today for my natural killer cells, but get this. All right. <laughs> this location I went to was literally downtown Chicago. Um, my clinic has three locations, and this one that I went to today was the downtown location. And the courier that was supposed to be picking up the blood samples... You got no car accident. <laughs> so they said, well, you know how long that can take. So either you can sit here for like 45 minutes or you can go to the more convenient location tomorrow and get your blood drawn in the morning. Uh, their other location is literally 10 minutes from my work. Not a big deal to stop there. It's, it's really a blessing that their location is that close. Um, so I'm going to go tomorrow morning, bright and early, give them my blood. They did tell me, and I forgot about this. I didn't know this in the past, and for whatever reason, it kind of slipped my mind. It takes a week to get back the natural killer cell results. So we won't know for a while where my level is at. But she did tell me that when they did give me the intralipids on the 12th, on February 12th, they drew my blood before they gave me that intralipid infusion. Um, obviously, it's been a week since then. It's been over a week since then. Those results did come back, and... The blood stated that my natural killer cell level was good. Um, so that that's that that kind of that kind of helps. That helps to know that I don't know what the exact number was. She didn't tell me, I didn't think to ask, but she did say that my natural killer cell level was good before they gave me the intralipids on the 12th. So it, it may or may not be back up rising slowly again by now, but more than likely we're not like in the crazy zone yet. So We'll see what it says next week when that comes in. Um, the, you know, the crazy part is uh, I already scheduled my appointment for next Monday. And depending on when those results come in, only one of the clinic locations actually does the intralipids. And the one that I scheduled my appointment at on next Monday is not the location that does the intralipids. So depending on when those results come back, I may have to go back or I may have to reschedule or, you know, we'll see. We'll see. So that's it. That's it. We have one bean with a heartbeat at five weeks and six days, and that's amazing. Amazing. So right now I am praying that little ones stay stuck, that we don't have any problems. <laughs> I did ask. Of course, I had to ask. I said, is there any hemorrhages? Is there any SCHs? Is it good and stuck? And she said her exact words were, is it looks exactly the way it's supposed to at this stage of the game. So uh, we're going to pray that it stays stuck. We're going to pray that the collapsing sac on the second bean that unfortunately did not make it um, 
reabsorbs and that the bleeding stops soon so that she can have her sanity back. I just, I hate seeing that spotting. It, it makes me a nervous wreck. Oh, oh, I know what I forgot. All right, five weeks, six days. So we'll say five, five, five weeks of pregnancy. Um, I can't really report too many symptoms and whatnot. I honestly don't have too many. But I will say that <laughs> for three days last week, all I wanted was hot dogs, which is really strange. <laughs> all I wanted was hot dogs for three days straight. And that, that, yeah, that's not normal for me. So there's that. Um, the bladder is waking me up at night. Now, that's not because there's anything large enough there to be pushing down on it. But I believe, if I remember correctly, in the first trimester, there's like extra blood flow and that causes more stuff to be put into your kidneys and your bladder, so that's why you tend to go to the bathroom more. So that has been going on. I've had a lot of um, acid reflux. I have, like, bottles of Tums all over my house, all over my office. It's like I have to pop one of those, like, two or three times a day. But that's, that's really it. That's really it. I don't have too many more symptoms other than that, but those have been pretty consistent. Those have been pretty consistent. Um, the P-Tus, I haven't done too many. I did one a couple of days ago. It's right here. Hang on. I said that I was done with the Dollar Tree tests because they really hadn't, uh, they weren't getting any darker. It was like I progressed out of them. But the first response is, I don't remember who it was. I think it might have been Lee. Someone told me that you can get the control line darker than the test line. Okay, so I said, well... I need more of those. <laughs> so, all right. The two that I had done before was on nine days and 11 days past transfer. And that's what these two are. Okay. You can see this is the test line on this side. Nine was pretty light. 11 was significantly darker. Okay. Then I did one on day 17 when I learned about this control line, test line darker, darker than the control line. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so there's 17. All right. Again, that's the test line. And it is definitely darker than the control line. And can I just say that that test line popped up before the control line was even done processing. It was like there. So that's awesome. I do have a couple more of these left because it was a multi-pack. I, I don't know if I'll use them. I probably will just for the heck of it. But I do have more digitals. Um, I did take a digital sometime last week. It did turn to the statement where it says 2 to 3. It had previously, it had previously said 1 to 2. So it is now reading 2 to 3. And um, maybe at the end of this week, beginning of next week, I'll try again and see if it says 4 plus. And if it does, I will post that um, probably on Instagram and Facebook also. One last thing. All right. Those of you who have been following this journey, um, I mentioned that when we did the PGD testing, we requested to know what sex all of them were. And we had, at that time, we had three girls and two boys of the five that they said were good. At that time, we said we didn't want to know which ones were actually going to be put in just to put the two best ones in. And they accidentally told us <laughs> um, on the day of the transfer what was going in. And you may or may not recall me saying that I wasn't going to share that information. I was going to sit on it for a while because part of me really didn't want to know. I wanted I wanted to be surprised like everybody else so that I could possibly do a reveal and, you know, all the fun little stuff you get to do with that. But um, my intention was, you know, if the twins stayed, if it ended up being twins, in fact, that I would just kind of sit on the information and even though I knew what it was, I would do a reveal for everybody else just, just, just to have fun. Um, well... Now, because we know there is only one that took in there, because of the combination that was put in in the first place, I can say that nobody knows what's in there. Because what was originally put in was one boy and one girl. 
So we got to find out like the rest of the world, which one we got going on in there. So that's fun. That's fun. Thank you to all of you guys for the prayers and the thoughts and the hopeful and wishful thinkings. I put up like a cryptic thing on Instagram last night saying prayers, please, because my body was doing something that I didn't like. Now you know what it is. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you for all the prayers. Thank you for all the thoughts. Thank you for all the comments. Um, my phone was blowing up. Waiting, people waiting to see what the results of this appointment was going to be. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It just, it really feeds the heart. So thank you to all of you. I will talk to you guys probably next Monday um, about pregnancy-related stuff. All right. Thank you again for watching. Bye.